Welcome to our homestead. Uh, behind us is the cabin that my husband Christer, right here, I'm Amanda, my son Kai, our dog Frankie. Behind us is the cabin we live in off the grid. Been living here since he was about two months old, but my husband grew up here. So the house has a lot of history and sentimental value for us. And I guess we're just gonna walk you around really quick and show you how we make things work. So this is our garden and it, it by no means is uh, the source of our food, but it is, it is, it's like a hobby, like everybody else, right? We've got the fall rains right now and we've got nothing. My lettuce all went to seed before it got big and my peas are just starting to blossom now. So <laughs> not very hopeful for this stuff, but it is fun and my potatoes are doing great. So we'll have a good potato and oven, onion harvest. So that's fun. We try to you know, grow as much produce as we can with a two-year-old around picking seedlings and things, but uh, really we usually end up hiking into the grocery store. The hike is, uh, takes me two hours and maybe a little bit more now that I've got a bun growing. And we always, you know, we, when we go in, we have to carry Kai and it's kind of arduous because even when we get to the truck at the trailhead, it's another two hours to the grocery store. So round trip is eight hours before we even walk into the store. So it takes, it's, uh, everything's a mission. Everything is a mission. Everything's an adventure, everything's a mission. We try to be really prepared. It's not like if you're missing an ingredient, you can run out to the store and get it. You just have to improvise. Uh, all of our meals are cooked here by moi. <laughs> Except for what we order out and yeah. have delivered. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so we haul in all of our non-perishable stuff. We'll get to that actually when we get to the little cabin. The, the garden is fun. And actually I've been studying up on weeds that you can eat, edible weeds. We've got a lot of those. So a lot of chickweed and wild dock and fiddlehead ferns. You can eat fireweed. We've got a lot of stuff that just, actually all the wild stuff grew much better than my garden this year. So we're pretty responsible. We try to be pretty responsible. We don't burn plastic uh, or chemical things, but we do all of our paper and our brush. We do a big bonfire probably once a month uh, where we burn our paper um, and yard waste, things like that. And then you can see we have our, just our little non-bear proof, non-mouse proof, but it totally works for us, garbage. There's no food in there because we do compost all of our food and water waste. So it's just mostly packaging that we can't burn. Plastic. Plastic. What, what do you do with your plastic? Can I hike we, it out, yeah. yeah. Hike it out, <laughs> carry yeah. it out. It's like camp, camping, right? Responsible camping, pack it in, pack it out. I carried a lot of poopy <laughs> diapers. <laughs> <laughs> that we we could have burned and I did not so I get responsibility kudos yeah that is true yeah you know we we ta talked about doing the cloth diapers but with no running water it, it became just way too I'll not feasible to do here. so we'll just walk back here you can see my my laundry line is hung out here so that's the dryer so the rainy days are great because we get water to do the laundry <laughs> but then it's not a great day to dry the laundry, so we had to have a... Well, and you have to wait for the sun for the solar power. <laughs> yeah, wait for the sun for yeah. the solar. So, so you get a rainy day, catch your water, then the next sunny day you'll do the laundry and hang it up. It takes a little bit of planning. Luckily, we'd only do about a load a week, and we have a high capacity washing machine. That was one of my things when we moved out here. It's like, yeah, we need one of those. Even though we don't have the running water, we hook it up inside with the intake hose, the discharge hose. We by hand carry buckets out of the house. Uh, totally worth it. Doing laundry by hand is not something that anybody wants to do. Woodshed, do you want to say anything about, it, about that while we walk by? I don't know what to say about the woodshed except that it <laughs> needs to be bigger, right? Like Always. <clears throat> yeah. Christopher's mom actually cooked on that as when he was a kid. She cooked in that. In so that. She used the oven. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember cool. she used to cook it in the summertime. You get your and fire going and this would be, we took it, it's been falling apart. Yeah. So in she, the rain. she would bake in the morning and you'd have to like start the stove early so that um, the house doesn't get too hot, but it would still get like hot enough. So you'd have to prop the door open and then you'd have to put a mosquito net over the door because you don't want a bunch of bugs coming in. But obviously there's not a thermostat on there. So you're like trying to pick the right pieces of wood. And um, I remember thinking that my mom was not a particularly good cook. <laughs> and then I had a, this realization that she like <laughs> the raw materials were at fault. I'm gonna take you. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you to Uncle Claw and I'll be right back. Okay. You guys walk past the bench and stuff, and I'll be, um, I'll be back. Getting rid of the stove is a hard one for me, or up upgrading the stove. 
that thing just feels right, you know? Feels like the house should have an old school cook stove. So we took the top off of this thing. Um, you know, it had the old school top with the burners. It's, it's actually a desk. It's that desk that's covered in food in there. The pantry desk um, is the top of the old cook stove. So we pulled that off to kind of have that little remembrance of it, I guess. It's time to let it go. It's like, it's, it's definitely a hazard for... For many reasons. I mean, it, it didn't, it heated the house okay but it would back up and with the little kids in the house, I don't want there to be a lot of smoke. That one we have now is so much more efficient. You know, a couple pieces of wood, you're good to go. This you'd have to soak in the night, like waking up to stoke the stove or waking up and having the house be super cold in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the, the stove that we have now will run all night long. We've had that thing awesome. going for over 24 hours. It'll just last. It's, it is awesome. That stove is amazing. I re so the specs on the stove is that if you fill the firebox, it'll, it'll burn for 30 hours. And I remember reading through that and I was like, No way. My ass, it's going to burn for 30 hours. But if it burns for half of that, that'd be friggin' sweet. As long I, as it gets us through the night. I think that thing will burn for 48 hours. Yeah. Like if you really stoke that up and turn it way down, it's the crazy. The new wood stoves are awesome. Yeah. So we got the little Blaze Princess. The Blaze King Princess. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and it's, it's awesome. so oversized for the how big our house is. But our house is pretty drafty. So I think it, it's suitable. I talked Perfect. to the, the, the stove guy and he's like, I described the house. He's, he's like 600 square feet. You don't want that stove. That stove's way too big. I'm like, I don't think it is. He's like, <laughs> well, do you have a lot of windows and is your house super drafty? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, maybe that's the right stove. Um, so as we've been plugging up the holes, it's becoming you know, warmer. warmer. Yep. So that the big house uh, took about nine months to build. This little cabin was where Rick lived while he was building the big house. Um, basically, he got dropped down. Uh, I, I think here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, he he'd come and he'd stake the land, so he knew where he was going. And then he like recruited a bunch of buddies. And again, these guys were you know 28 years old or something, which is fun to think about, right? It's just a, it was just a bunch of kids really. Um, and then they they got helicopter dropped out here and had this five day like you Sprint. know 15 hours a day or whatever and built this cabin and so this is where he lived when he was uh building the big house and now it's turned into storage yeah it's our food storage so yeah. we don't have refrigeration and um there are bears out here so we don't like to keep too much in the house especially if, if we're gone for more than i don't know two weeks or so we try to get most anything that smells and just get it away from the house pots and pans and stuff you know i rebuilt this little cabin <laughs> last summer i was all fired up about it it's like you know the, it had been falling into the ground and just kind of looking like it was over it was rotting into the ground yeah I mean, so it was it was basically wood sitting on the ground which kept it really cold because the permafrost you know and, and the, the the it wasn't a sod roof but it was just tar paper so there were you know a lot of seedlings Moss. and things growing up yeah. there so it's it was really super pretty. insulated uh doesn't get nearly as cold as it used to it doesn't stay nearly as cold but it's, it's just kind of a bummer to rebuild it and then have to put plywood back over the windows for the bears just feels like i built this pretty thing and now it looks derelict again so yeah we did a restoration project so all the timbers are the original you can tell these are peeled logs instead of um skinned logs not peeled logs um and it's fun to think that these are the logs that rick was working with like back in the 80s so yeah, so we, in the spring, the late, late spring on the last crust of snow, we haul in all of our um, non-perishable goods. So we have mostly pasta, rice, cans of goods that we keep in here. And then we have two uh, coolers, one for dairy and meat, which, you know, really you gotta eat within the first three days out here. Um, yogurt actually lasts forever though, cottage cheese and sour cream, anything cultured, it's great. And then we also have our produce bin and things like cabbage, carrots, potatoes, onions, that lasts forever. But anything like berries that we want to bring, any special treats have to get eaten within the first day. Yeah, so. the, the food thing is a whole process. I'm not really oh sure how God, to explain it. Oh my God, the food it, thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, could, I could write a book about how to you know, make your food last longer, what the order that you should eat things in, and I could make a menu out of, what can you make out of just canned goods, <laughs> you know? stuff like yeah you know, we I, I do wish we ate better but I think we're actually doing pretty well yeah. do you ever think about actually doing that like a book like an ebook or um, something I'm real busy right now <laughs> but yeah once all the projects are done all the building um, 
Yeah, so the building projects, Christopher's awesome. He's fast, he peels the logs, get everything notched and put together. And then I usually come through and um, there's this uh, permachinking, which is a great product. It's a lifeline product, but it um, takes a long time for me to put it in. Um, and we've had squirrels that have actually gotten through the little, they could, those rodents, I swear they can fit through anything. And once they get in here, we have one metal big garbage can in there, but everything else is just Rubbermaid and they've eaten through thick, thick plastic. We've had so many problems with squirrels getting in and they've eaten through the wood even, um, but they don't eat this stuff. It's like a latex type of, yeah. some kind of medium in it too, that makes it thicker, but it's awesome. So. Yeah, on the house it's like weatherproofing, but for here it's just you know, proof. road improving. It works. Um, well. Yeah, it works great. When I get the time, I, I haven't. I've gotten the big holes, but I haven't gotten through and gotten everything on there yet. But um, so that's where we keep everything: storage, long-term storage, and food stuff. Dream projects. We've got. Um, we're gonna put a little carport off the side so that we can keep our snow machine mm. and carport. tool tool shed tool shed. So that will free up space in our woodshed too. So we've got. Some vision for the place to there's a lot work. There's it's a still lot. happening yeah yeah <laughs> with him working full-time and me full-time momming um things are slow it's a snail's pace i keep thinking gosh if i had my mom come out or aunties come out for a month i could get so much done uh yeah. but we get about two hours of work done a day like homestead work done we've got the snow machine over there underneath the tarp um, <clears throat> usually, uh, historically, we had dogs, so there's, um, you can see a little, this is actually a dog spot, there's there's probably half a dozen chains. Dog hookups. Dog hookups out here. So we haven't had dogs for the last two and a half years. I, I miss them, uh, but the snow machine is way faster, um, and you can haul way more. So this is just a, a big ass, it's, it's like 10 feet long um, with no back so I can haul building logs. The, that's what the stove came in on, that's what the washing machine came in on. Yep. Um, yeah, Every, basically everything that's big comes out in the winter on the snow. And because if it doesn't, we have to carry it in on, on that you know, two hour hike and on your back. I mean, Christian's carried 80 pound packs through a bog. It's, it's grueling. Yeah. But once everything's out here, you kind of forget about that. You're like, oh, sweet. We've got a new window. We've got you know, a beautiful stained glass window out of our guest house. I love it. And I don't know. It's not really worth uh, going down there. It's just a trail that dead ends into a pit of uh, compost. But we, that's, you know, we have to hike all of our drain gray water, like cook it in, you know, drain your pasta or your food scraps or you, know, you brush your teeth and spit into a bucket. All of that gets carried down and dumped far from the house so it doesn't attract animals. Um, and you'd actually think, I've been surprised, like mice get into it, but there's nothing big that's ever really yeah. been down there eating. I've never seen bears down there. But... In the winter, it's fun to see the tracks, to see who's come to, to feed. Yeah. But uh, we, you know, we eat a lot of vegetarian stuff, so there's not a lot of meat scraps going in there. So it really is like carrot peels. Future site of our carport. Yes. And actually the old site of the little cabin. Yeah, so basically these these old, um, I, I don't know what you call them. Foundation the foundation logs. raft logs or whatever. This was the, this, the original foundation for the little cabin. So they, you can see the back here, it's kind of just starting to rot out. This hole in the ground, if you can kind of tell, um, was where the old little cabin was. It was rotting down I was going to rebuild it so I tore it down and was going to rebuild it in the same spot but I started to dig uh, holes for the foundation the sauna tubes you know the foundation pilings and ended up running into like immovable giant rocks so I just took the whole thing and moved it over and then we had the brainstorm that we should just have another like a, a gabled roof so another roof that comes off the back of this thing and that's where I'll park the snow machine and I'll put a bunch of lawn Tools stuff and, and building supplies yeah so that, you know, the whole, this whole place has been just this huge work in progress for the last three years. And like I said, Rick, Rick came out here 35 years ago. I, what he did is amazing, blows my mind every time. And then, and then I, I think he sat on his thumb for 35 years and just let everything rot and like stapled Visqueen over the holes. It just like didn't deal. Well, he is busy doing other stuff. Yeah, so we <laughs> He had you. <laughs> so anyway, so we've been dealing. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really excited about this. Yeah. Uh, this would be cool. So this is uh, concrete? concrete for the pilings. Um, so that's one of the that's one of the new and improved features. So, yeah. Uh, next spring's projects, and we've got all of our logs and 
200 years from now, when they find this site, there's just going to be like two dozen of these little cement pilings <laughs> sticking <laughs> up all over the place. Um, but it's awesome to have the house be up and like this will never rot out now. So it's like I just, Kai's going to have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, what he's just, do. what's that kid going to do? Just like, have fun. <laughs> Might actually just stay here and hang out. What a concept. So we've got, uh, there's three solar panels back there. Um, four solar panels, one of them smaller. But so we have about 750 watts of solar, I think. 770 watts of solar, something like that. Um, which is a ton for what we need. Um, or at least it's a ton for what we need until winter hits and then... Then the no amount the, helps. Yeah, exactly. So we, we, we go from having this enormous surplus uh, to having not nearly enough in the space of like a month Weeks. or yeah it's, yeah. it's crazy because you get you've got 24 hours worth of light and then you've got almost 24 hours worth of darkness in the space of six months that that equinox period when things are changing the fastest you lose like i i, I want to say a day. there's a month like september you lose like two hours or something i forget what the number is but so the panels are rad most of the time like it's probably eight months a year then there's that four we're months just a year. throwing away power i wish there was a way better battery Capacity. Yeah, if I could store all that, like I have enough on an annual basis. If I had the most, the biggest battery bank in the whole world, I'd be set. Yeah. Right? Like, totally set. And then that's the satellite dish is a necessary eyesore. Kind of bums me out. Um, but uh, the, it does it does what it needs to do. So that's how I work. Keeps us connected. Satellite yeah. for the internet, yes. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, yeah, like you said, that's how, that's how I work. But every year, <coughs> this is just like, full of firewood. Every so spring we haul in all of our firewood and building wood. Yeah. So this is, you'll see like piping, we get it piled high and then it's the whole summer of processing, chopping and um, stacking. And and that's so. to save the trees out here. Like you don't want to cut any trees down here. Or? I'm, I'm warming to the idea. So basically I have, it's hard for me. It's this weird balance of feeling like I, I want to have as little impact as possible and I feel like if I get, you know, if I take one tree per acre, then, then the forest will never know, right? Um, well, for building logs, we try to get the dead standing spruce trees. Uh, they're drier, they're lighter, they're easier to move, and it's better, if, you know. We've got a spruce, spruce beetle infestation up here that has been killing off our, our spruce trees. Um, we actually had to cut down one of my favorite huge, huge old growth trees because spruce beetles, but those make the best building logs. Yeah. Uh, so we get those. So we go around and specifically choose those spruce trees for building. Yeah. And then the birch trees, we try to get the ones with the busted off tops because they're going to rot out and die anyway. Yeah. So it, so there's there's some of that. So you uh, there's not enough compromised trees here. There there probably is on the on the property if I looked at the entirety of the property and, and tried to pick them off. But um, I I don't. You know, it's weird. We've been there's so people have been harvesting trees out here for almost 40 years, and you'd think that there would be just like stumps everywhere, but it's not like you can tell as you're getting to to our neck of the woods, so to speak, that there there's suddenly just stumps everywhere. And I think that part of that is that we do range more widely probably than we need to 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 yeah to get the trees. But um, I've been starting to feel like they're the view I, has yeah, been compromised. The view's been compromised, right? So <laughs> trees if I, have grown in the last 30 years. If I started taking the trees here, then the view would be better and I got to take a tree from somewhere. So maybe I should, I don't know. But anyway, basically yeah. in the springtime, the springtime is a whole flurry of activity and getting in firewood is one of the big things. So, but this is, this is the old porch. So I, you know, ripped down the old porch to build this new porch. Um, and then these are all the sort of dead porch logs, which I'll throw the ones that are truly rotten and compromised on the bonfire. And then I'll cu cut up the rest of them and we'll burn them, which kind of feels a little cannibalistic. It's sort of exciting to burn the house. <laughs> This is sort of iconic, right? So we've got both of these logs, which is where I set up the building logs um, to peel them. Cause you gotta, you know, the log comes in looking like a log with bark and whatever, the and then gets, yeah, the tree comes in looking like a tree. Then you've got to process it and peel it to make it look like that. Um, so I've got this peeling station set up and a bunch of log peels. Um, and then the dog pulled in a, a moose leg. Oh yeah, you can't see that probably. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the moose bone while well, the dog sits here and watches me do my thing. So I, it's just, this is like where I spent my summer. Well, it's, <laughs> it, it's all actually, it works great because yeah, you have the, the extra firewood, but the log shavings make perfect kindling. Uh, so we try to pick those up before it rains and uh, use, use what we can. Sad, we had all those sled dogs in it. 
it's a whole culture that has had to shift. The dogs used to eat the scraps, so we didn't have to hike that bucket out so far. I mean, the dump bucket used to be the dog food bucket. It really did. Um, Frankie's a little more picky of an eater, and he can't handle all that. Um, but yeah, and just the culture of like walking out the door. I mean, there's a, a year and a half we didn't have a dog, and it's weird being like you walk out the door. Maybe there's a bear or a moose. You wouldn't know it. Um, so we saw our alarm dog. I was standing right here. It was probably two weeks ago, so there was, it was still light. It was 11 o'clock. It was just getting dusky. And the dog comes up and just gets super excited. He, he, you can just tell he's on full alert, right? And I can't really it figure out why. On. So I'm just looking out. It looks like the forest. We're just hanging out. And then he goes racing down towards the spring, probably you know 20 yards. And then there's this giant bull moose that just comes standing up out of the yard that was literally, it was like the 25 so feet tall. away. Yeah, it's just sleeping there. He's a huge rack. And it's like, it just, it was like a cartoon moment just to see him like rise up on all four legs all at once a that it's real that there's you know that there Stop. are moose there are bear and they're not that far away and then b that just you don't like it's closer than you think yeah you know it's right well, here. it's funny so the hike out is far people don't just show up here like they come with a purpose and we know they're coming and we usually have to hike out and get them because the trail is almost indistinguishable from a game trail i was here alone with kai you were somewhere getting dripped on. Um, and I was in the kitchen cooking and doing dishes and he was playing by himself. And all of a sudden Kai comes running up. He says, mom, who's that big guy in the yard? I, and I, I mean, I'm kind of like, what? And it's like, mom, grabs my hand, pulls me over the window. Look at that big guy in the yard. It's a moose. You know, I was like, oh, it's a moose, honey. It's okay. But it is one of those reminders of, yeah, just random things will walk through the yard. And it's really those moments where you're like, oh, and it balances out the hard stuff. It makes it feel like, oh, that's right. That's why we're out here. This is cool. We do water catchment, which is not drinking water, but it's uh, laundry water. water and wash water. So when we're taking saunas, um, that's the water we use to bathe. And sometimes dish water, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, I was going to say dishes, laundry, and body washing water. Yeah. Um, and, you know, cleaning up um, from drinking and doing stuff like that. Utility water. Um, so the, we do have a spring that's um, that's probably 50 yards, 100 yards down, down the hill. Um, so that's that's where all the drinking water comes in. I carry it up by hand. Um, it's funny. Uh, we were in San Diego before we lived here, and it was like this huge drought. This place is a, I, I think, it's still classified as a boreal rainforest. It's just soaked. There's water everywhere. And we go through, I know exactly how much water we go through because I pull it up by hand. <laughs> and I pull up two five gallon buckets and that lasts us for two or three days. The three of us, when we're when we're bathing in there, go through, I think about six gallons. Mm -hmm. So it's about two gallons to, per person to yeah. bathe. Um, and it's, it's just ironic to me because coming from San Diego where everybody's worried about the water and it's a big drought and whatever, I'm sure we were using, you know, 10 times, 20 times that much water. Yeah, we could use a lot more, but it, we use what we want and whatever. Yeah, um, so this, this is a, total mess like the whole you know it's a homestead so it's everything's kind of a work in progress um but uh when i pulled down the old porch that was the porch was also sort of the catch -all. Tool, tool shed catch-all place so now all that crap is piled up right here i'm trying not to put it back there but i need a place to put it yeah so i'm gonna build that <laughs> so i'm gonna build that carport thing and then and then, then it'll we'll really be cleaned up that will be cleaned up for sure uh, just comes off the roof no no gutter system or anything. It, it rains so hard, the roof gets cleaned off. Um, and we we never go through this much water. It grows algae before we can get through it all. Sauna is awesome. The sauna, <laughs> the bathhouse. The bath the bathhouse, is, yeah, that probably is a better term for it. That's the old stove that actually used to be in there before we rebuilt it. It's now a planter. Yeah, so <clears throat> there's been a bunch of building projects in the last two years. This this was not, not was it the year before? I forget. Anyway, a year or two Kyle ago. I was six months old, so it was two years ago. Yeah, we, we re rebuilt the sauna. So this is, uh, we fired up pretty much every other day um, and uh, sit in there and get sweaty and get hot. And then um, when you're ready to go in, just basically take a Navy shower, dump water over your head, soap up, rinse off. Um, and it's great. I mean, it feels to me, it feels like you're getting cleaner than you do in a shower because you're all the, sweating, it out. sweating it out, right? Um, Kai loves it. It's funny, when he was a kid, he didn't really like baths, but he loved the sauna. He just sits there, plays with his toys. Here we're inside our sauna. Christian and his brother built this, uh, and it actually took a little work, 
because we had to design the floor to drain, but keep it up off the ground. And uh, we had a couple of just, just construction. Pretty high tech engineering. That's good, <laughs> high, high tech. <laughs> well, how yeah. did you figure it out? Like what, what happened? Um, so there was, there's all these happy accidents that, so the old sauna, the reason that we had to rebuild it, uh, there was a couple of different reasons, but one of the reasons was my dad's building style was to build everything on the ground. So the old sauna logs were literally positioned on the ground. And, and what would happen is, again, you're taking this Navy shower where you're, you're rinsing, soaping, rinsing again, and then all the water just goes on the floor. And I was like, well, when I, when I pull this up, I don't, I don't want the logs to rot out. Um, and I don't want it to get icy and like not drain and I'm not really sure exactly what to do. So basically the floor, when we laid the floor out, um, it, it intentionally bows in the middle and also drains to the back. Um, so, and, and <clears throat> my real like stroke of genius was there's pressure treated uh, two by eights that run. So I don't know if you can see, but, but basically there's a perimeter here of pressure treated wood. So the water runs to the back and then there's about an inch lip up here and it, it just pulls up and drains out and it's actually worked great. So I, the pressure treated wood will probably last forever, but even if it doesn't, I can pull it off and replace it and I can, I, I can replace these boards. So I, I fully expect that in the next 10 or 20 years, I'll have to rip up the plywood Just in the here. floor though, it's just so much easier than rebuilding the whole structure. Yeah. So we've got our wood stove. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes or so to get it cooking. Depends um, on what time of year it is. Yeah, um, but there's our, our hot water gets, we put our water in there just like that, heat it up. Uh, we've got our rainwater in a six gallon bucket there and we just mix the temperature that we want. Um, Kai has his little bath right here. Um, and you know, we've been doing it family style, which means we, I'm pregnant, I can't get in a hot, hot sauna. So we've been only running it like 110, 120 is good for me. But back in the day, man. We, we've had this place cooking. I like to- Soaked to, it up and sit and just uh, so wet. No, numbers that I will tell you that make no sense. So that's that's the sauna thermometer and we've had it at 230, which doesn't, it does, seems like impossible, right? Like, like water, the water should be boiling, right? <laughs> like, um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the other part of the sauna is you sit in here, get super hot, and then um, in the summertime, dump rainwater on your head. In the wintertime, though, you can literally like go Definitely. snow swimming, mm -hmm. which is that'll take your breath away. Do that a couple times, and it's man, it feels it feels. You feel squeaky clean. Literally, your skin squeaks. Well, you, you also pores feel so tight. This natural empty. high of like you go back in, you're just like, whoa, I'm zonked, but in a good way. So everything yeah. seems really pleasant. And uh, one of the big new features of this on is, is my two windows looking out north so you can sit here and look at the mountains while you're cooking. Not just yeah. any mountains, Denali. Yeah, yeah, yeah looking oh, at yeah. the Alaska range. So so Denali is fairly prominent. I cut out the branches of this tree so it's just framed and sweet. Kick it, get, get too hot, look at the mountain, swim in the snow, repeat, and then you're clean. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is the guest house. Um, the idea was uh, that little cabin that, that we looked at earlier, um, we were going to just rebuild, it. rebuild the little cabin and we could kind of started to get carried away. And Got excited. The, so the little cabin, when, when we were kids, we used to turn it into a fort, but of course it's full of crap. So you would sort of like move all the crap to one side and then it would, you know, put a little bed in there or whatever. But I remember being like eight and 10 and there's the shotgun that's hanging over the door in the big house. We took our 22s out, put it over the door. We like got our own five gallon buckets and started getting water from the spring. It was like, this is gonna be our house. Um, so I wanted to, it's nice to have a guest house when people come out here, like you guys. Um, so we we're, were like, okay, well, we're gonna rebuild the little cabin, but we're gonna do a little bit better and maybe put a loft up so you can have like a place to stay. And then we just kind of started getting carried away. And now this place is way too pretty to store it's stuff in. way too pretty. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we got the we got a stained glass window <laughs> <laughs> that you had to hike out, hike right? out on my back, man. The, that that lead. Dude, that thing came along. That thing came from Indiana, like special. It's so <laughs> funny. So we did a big sailing trip before we came to live here in the woods, and uh, we were looking online, and I saw this, and I loved it. I, I loved it. It's this uh, sailboat, stained glass window. It's beautiful. It throws rainbows everywhere. And, and Christian's grandmother, Rick's mom. Why would you have a sailboat way out in the woods? And so I was like, what? Then I was like, because we went sailing, Grandma. She's like, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> so that's our little uh, reminder. You know, the woods and the sea are just big, big places we want to be. 
Uh, we do have two auxiliary beds. Our strawberry bed has been overtaken by wild raspberries, ironically. Um, but we have our rhubarb and we've got, um, I'm actually trying to plant cultivated big raspberries. So those are starting to take off. So this is such an improvement over what used to be. I think of this place is super fancy. I had a buddy that came out um, last summer. He was like, as, as he was sort of doing the postmortem, we were walking back out. I was like, so what is, you know, how did that compare to what you were imagining? He's like, you know, it, it actually was like a little bit less rustic. Like you told me it was super rustic. It wasn't that rustic, but the outhouse, that's rustic, dude. That place is rough. <laughs> I remember feeling like this is this, this is the is, new fancy outhouse, bro. What are you talking about, man? Like this is the good outhouse. Yeah, the old outhouse the dogs usually used to actually get into, and like it would leak. It was just disgusting. So now we've got our our toilet that our separating toilet seat. Yeah, we've got a urine separating toilet seat. So that's so, awesome. Yeah, um, you. Th this is the shit bucket, um, which we empty periodically we um, tried super hard to find somebody who would pump it like an rv place like if we hauled it out in the winter would you pump this and it was like no we tried to bring it to sanitation they're like no nobody wants our shit. yeah um so it kind of you know we do what we have to do out here um uh, being as responsible as you can be but anyway the, so yeah so now it's a bucket of crap and not a bucket of piss and crap yeah <laughs> so. which helps in the winter when you empty it you know just well, it helps in the summer, so it doesn't fill up, so you have to empty it. I never thought it would work for ladies, but it actually does. Every works every time. Yep. Um, you just have to in the winter. You have to remember to empty that little pee catchment can, otherwise it freezes. Yeah, we do burn. We burn our toilet paper, so really that is. It actually takes a long time to fill one of those for us. Um, two a year, we're good. Yeah. So in the spring, along with the hauling, that's another one of those jobs. Spring gets really busy around here. Mm -hmm. um, between hauling the firewood, the building logs, the provisioning. You also have to remember, oh yeah, take your shit out. Yeah, dude, if you're ever up here in the spring, you should check it out. That, yeah. That's like totally different and really fun. Every season out here is completely different. It's, uh, you wouldn't even recognize it, honestly. So in the winter, the walk, this, all these alders will branch over and you have like a little snow tunnel. It's super, super oh, cool. that's like magical when you get that um, flocking mm -hmm. on the trees, it's so pretty. This is the new porch. It's glorious. I love it. We can hang out here and not get wet in the rain. The fall rain is coming, so it's like a place that Kai and I can go. I can put him out here when he's screaming, which is excellent. The house is pretty small when he has meetings. You know, he's working online. It's, it's, like a, it's like a whole extra room to the house now. And I built it for, to be fairly grandiose. Um, mm. I wanted to make a statement. <laughs> this is your statement piece. <laughs> I, th I think the door is your statement piece. We worked. This is what we've worked the hardest on. Yeah, this is new. This is fancy. It has a latch on it. Love that sound. So this house was basically built by one person. Normally, you get a team of people and you place sill logs and you stack them up. But the stockading here, that's the logs that run up and down, make it possible for one person to kind of do this on their own. So it's a pretty unique style. You won't see cabins like this. Yeah, most log cabins had the, the horizontal, horizontal logs. logs. So, it's special, but it comes with its own set of um, issues. It Every its, single thing has, has a story. story. Right? So this is, this is the just-in-case shit, right? <laughs> it's like insurance. This is the artifact of having a two-year-old in the woods. So yeah. uh, that's Kai's chariot back and forth two hours each way. I climbed Nolly the first time in 2001 with these snowshoes that are probably... 50 years old and we were the retro guys every time we would get into camp they'd be like you guys are the retro guys i was with with rick you know my stepdad so we had these bunny boot crampons and these snowshoes and and bunny boots which are which are total old school gear right everybody's they're got Korean now war vintage yeah. uh, army surplus which they're the best though it, it was exactly the right thing to climb the mountain in 1976 and we climbed in 2001 and <laughs> had all the same gear and like literally then like we were known up and down the mountains like you guys are the retro guys it's like no we're the gear guys do we're the guys that can't afford the plastic boots so that's the shrine to the days of yore because we don't see family that often we keep you know for my son like all the aunties and the grandmas and the grandpas and we've got all the regular kid stuff books and but then we also have special stuff the lead star that we have to keep up really high now that we have two-year-old around but that's, that is hilarious so so my brother, grew up out here yeah my brother and i had a, a stump where we would we would put targets and we'd do 22 practice yeah shoot, shoot, shoot 22s for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to the point where 
you could go in with a pocket knife and dig out bullets, except they weren't bullets. They were uh, like a bullet amalgams because there was just like the stump itself was basically lead. So we dug up all of the old lead bullets and and Rick cut a form into a piece of wood and we poured a lead. I know, because you guys are... Yeah, so this will make you talk funny, but it's cool. It is. All the stuff. Every, everything has a story. Everything, you know? ha like that. Everything. Every single thing, like this picture, you know. From 1982. Uh, from 1982, yeah. And it's been hanging there since 1982, right? Like, I don't know what's behind there. There could be holes that, you know, mice come in. And guys' toys, up. although half of those toys are my toys. That's the cool thing. I mean, I feel like you don't really get that anymore. You know, people growing up in the same house that, or having, you know, having your kids in the same house that you grew up in. Like, these are literally, this is Uncle Forrest's chainsaw. Uncle Forrest got this when he was five years old, 22 years ago. And now, <laughs> now Kai thinks it's the coolest thing in the world and runs around and helps me, you know, build a little cabin with his toy chainsaw. So yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, all of this stuff is pretty Yeah, that's, that's Uncle Forrest. Yeah, all this stuff is pretty old, like Duplos, the original Duplo bunny, that's pretty sweet. Original micro machines, they're pretty cool. This yeah. is my domain. Sometimes, you know, it feels like they live here. Right here, specifically. Um, we cook all of our meals here, there's no takeout. No one's going to deliver us pizza. Oh, I wish they would. It would be really awesome. So Amazon someday with the drones. Yes, everybody keeps asking about the Amazon drone delivery service, and I'm all about that. I support that program. <laughs> I mean, when we get even when we get into town, it's you know if we're like on a mission. We're going to the grocery store because it's a you know it's a two-hour hike out and then back. So you've got four hours of just the trail. Then it's another two hours down to town and back. So that's another four hours. So it's an eight-hour round trip before you even do anything. So basically, everything is a mission. <laughs> Right, so it's like it's very rare that you have the time, to be, time to be not on a mission. Basically, you're begging, borrowing time from a friend. It's like, can you watch my kid, and then can I also please stay overnight on your couch? Except for now, we have a kid, so it's not a like couch. Do you have a spare bedroom that we can use? You know, um, that's a, a something that's we do have friends in town. They do let us do that, but. You're not doing it every week. You're not doing it every month. It's a special occasion kind of thing. So let's talk about all the fancy that we. Oh, have. we made so fancy here. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's been a lot of upgrades um, since we moved in. One of the things that I found special about living here was walking into the house and having and really feeling like you were walking back in time. It felt like that. You had the old cook stove, and there was you know. It, I, mean, I guess we had plastic buckets, but really other than that, there was sort of no. You guys had like lanterns, kerosene lanterns and stuff when you first moved back here. Yeah, part of it is, is feels like just totally right because it's the necessity of, um, you know, what it takes to be able to live here for us. So, for example, I have to have a fairly elaborate solar setup because I have to have power, because I have to have the computer, because I have to, I have to log on. So if I'm going to have all that, running these LED Christmas lights is like... It costs it's nothing, free. right? It's free, yeah. right? So all of the lights that you see are are new in the last two years, and it's funny to me sometimes. I'll turn off all the lights, and I'll turn off the one single light that we used to have over in the corner over there, and just to just to realize. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago, right? It's not. We're not talking thirty years ago. We're talking like three years ago that this house that was like as bright as you could get it, you know. And it's it's crazy to to feel. That's one of those things where um, you don't. There's there's certain things about being here that are, that are really different than being on a, in a conventional house and lighting as funny as it sounds is one of the big ones where it's the winter and it's dark you know basically the sun rises at ten and sets at two and it's dark all the time and when you really can't make your house light you know you turn on the light and there's like this one little pool in the corner and everything else is still dark it really feels like winter is just forever and that, but you turn on these. Christmas lights, and even though the the lighting is still pretty mellow compared to a conventional house, it's like now we can see nice. and do the dishes. And there's been some upgrades like that, which which is it's a you know it's a push and pull for me because it's nice to have that, and at the same time it's it seems antithetical to the rustic. The, the rustic, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of caught making the rough in it. Yeah. Not out here to rough it, honey. Yeah, we're not. Smooth it. Yeah. yeah. Who's cool is that? Rex. That's Rex. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the, the track lighting up here is new. The Christmas lights that run around the house are new. 
This is um, my Christmas present last year. There used to be this, a cook stove literally right here. So that stove, believe it or that's not, new too. that's like a super fancy stove. That's like a $3,000 stove. Um, it's a, it's got a catalytic reburner and it's like super fancy top of the line, like 89% efficient or something stupid. Well, yeah, the old cook stove, it would, when it backed up, it would get super smoky in here. And I was like, I have a two month old. I'm not bringing a two month old into a smoky, sooty environment, right? That's not what a good mom does. So, and, and, you know, who wants to be cold? And this, this had been a pretty drafty cold place to live. So the first week, the first time when we first moved out here, that was the one, that was the first thing. The second thing was the washing machine. I needed a washing machine. And this, this was just last year. And those are the, probably the, for me, the three biggest yeah, the, the, life changers, like the, really which, life changers out here. The process of getting these things out here is, is real, right? <laughs> like, so the old, it, it's, it's funny actually. So nothing that we've brought out is, is bigger than the old cook stove. Then the old cook stove came out in 1982 on a dog sled. Yeah, and was dropped three times, and the fire brick was cracked, and you know, is a thing. But yeah, bringing this thing out—it's actually, it's not as hard as you would think. It's just, it, it's you got to put it on the snow machine, you strap it down, and hope for the best, and then like avoid all the trees. Basically, is, is the process. It is. A real deal when like when you're thinking about what you're going to bring back it's like well is that going to fit on the sled and how is that going to work and it's, it's a totally well and if you want it in june you just have to wait until there's enough snow which last year it wasn't until christmas yeah we had plans to buy this stove months before it actually came out here right because 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 of that um and yeah waiting for the snow right and there's you know the stove is one thing like obviously i'm not going to put this 150 pound stove on my back but but even just the stuff we redid the counter last year and just these these two by twelves, like, Heavy I guess I probably could have made an extra trip and brought the two by twelves, but really, it's the kind of thing that you do when it snows. So you you definitely like plan life based on the weather, which is kind of cool. You know, the trail is is miles and it is not passable on an ATV. It's a footpath. It's like a game trail, and it goes. The reason is we can't have ATV is because it goes over creeks and over sloughs and over tundra, which is pretty tough terrain to. Uh, put any kind of trail and walking is difficult. So not only are you walking so far, but you, you know, carrying all of your produce in the summer, um, you don't want to have any extra weight to that. So if you're already, and Kai is not getting any lighter, you know, I think he's like 35 pounds now. So and then you add all your groceries to that and you each, we each have a pack. And that's the problem with this. I can't do a pack anymore. So this summer it's been lean bringing stuff in and sending Chris out on solo missions. and So I really did, don't get into town. When you ask that question, I'm like, into town? I can't remember the last time I saw other people, <laughs> you know, which is a weird thing to say, right? We're in some ways so connected, having the internet access back here. In other ways, it's just yeah. the human contact, like the actual physical contact is... Um, That's one of the things I think about all the time. Like, so I have instantaneous feedback. When this house was built in 1982, Rick walked out here and there was no cell phone, there was no internet, there was no anything. There was right? radio there, and he... No, no, there wasn't when he got back here. I mean, there there was the radio, like the FM radio. Yeah. Um, but, but he, you know, would walk out to the post office, get a letter, walk back, be here for a month and then send that letter and then it would take two weeks to get there. It was like the, the communication Slow. cycle was so different, right? And now it's just like everything's happening and it feels so 21st century to me, as funny as that sounds, to be out here and just have all that communication running back and forth and it's such a different vibe than it ever used to be. It is weird because in some ways it's a total throwback, you know, without the running water and being on our own electric system and whatever. Yeah, that's all old, but in other ways, it's, it's the same as anywhere else. So this is our, um, I'm going to say sink. And it's funny, the other day I asked Kai to bring a dish to the sink. He's like, where's the sink? I'm like, oh, the dish pan. It's, a, it's a, you know, here's our dirty dishes. You know, I'll heat up whatever was the biggest pan that I cooked in. You know, put the water on there and I'll wash the dishes, dry the dishes, put them away. Which is totally normal, except... For, you know, people talk about dishwashers are so water efficient and it's all ironic that we have more water than we could ever use up here. And at the same time, because we're hauling it by hand, we use so little. This is our um, our dump bucket and it's a five gallon bucket. That's where all of our 
you know, vegetable yeah, peelings, compost, the drain, exactly. So I know that when I do dishes, I use less than five gallons of water. By a lot. By a like, lot. Like a, you might use yeah. half a gallon. So people make this argument like, oh, the dishwasher saves so much water. I'm like, yeah, but you could do dishes with less water. Hand washing is another thing that just gets difficult with the two-year-old, you know, wash your hands, you, you know, soap up his hands and make him hold them over the bucket and you're rinsing them just with a little cup, you know, of water. Oh, this is vintage. This is our hand washing cup. Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury Doughboy, man. <laughs> that is 35 years this old. is an antique, I'm sure, but we use it every day, every day. So here's our washer. Um, how it's it's an awesome dryer, it's like large capacity, which is great because we only do about one load a week. Two if it rains, and we have the extra water. But on the back side here, we have two large like Rubbermaid tubs, one full of water for our intake and one for our discharge. So basically we just drop the hoses in the tub, sucks it up, washes and you know, rinses, spits it back out. And then that water we actually haul out by hand, dump it out in the yard, um, biodegradable soap. Because it's, it's interesting, we're always worrying about contaminating our spring because that is our only drinking water source. It's the reason why we hike our water over here and dump it so that's on the drainage back away from the spring. Same reason why we don't ever move our outhouse because who wants to contaminate, you know, you never, you don't really, we don't really know what the drainage system is like down there. We don't want to contaminate it because that is what really keeps us alive out here. Yeah, the spring is. Absolutely it's amazing. Spring. It's a magical spring. Yeah. 40 below, it's still running. Um, summertime, 80 degrees out, it's still like 33 degrees. The summer, the summer before my first year in college, um, Rick and I decided we were going to finish the room that was started in 1993. I graduated from high school in 98, so it was five years, I guess. It sounds not as long as it felt, but um, this was going to be my little brother's room, um, except by the time it actually got finished, he was not living here anymore. When we go look at the little cabin, we'll talk about it, but um, we ended up pulling out all of this shit from the little cabin, and this has turned into kind of like the pantry. It's, it's Kai's bathroom. It's, it's, it's like random stuff. There's a lot that's been going on between getting ourselves up here and having, you know, being pregnant and having Kai be two years old and just trying to like and fix... And working full time. Yeah, working full time and trying to arrest the decay. Like I've rebuilt the sauna, the outhouse, the little cabin, the front porch, and we rebuilt that place in the last three years. There's a lot that still needs to get done. There's no architectural design. There's no building code. No one's no, coming out here to check us. It's definitely not to code. <laughs> not to code. It's not five star energy rated, but but whatever you want to do, dream big, right? Whatever you want to do, whatever you can do, you, you can do it, which is really fun. And I swear if I, if I didn't have kids and I could just do projects all the time, oh, happy as a clam. You know, it's, it's su it is super fun, and it's cool when you look at the wood and you're like, I remember that tree as a tree, and I remember peeling that tree, and I remember, you know, I didn't spike it in, but I remember Christopher spiking that in. <laughs> but it's, it's really a cool feeling, especially, I love going over to our guest cabin because, like, we built that. We, from the ground up, we picked the spot, we did everything. Frankly, this bookshelf is not really ideal, let's be honest. Um, yeah, stuff tends to fall off of it when the door closes. But because you have to slam the door to get it to close. Yeah, but Rick built this bookshelf. He built the chairs. 37 years ago. Built the table. It hasn't moved. <laughs> Neither have the books. <laughs> no. You look at the top of them, you can tell. <laughs> the fact that we have encyclopedias. Right, yeah, we even have Even though the, we have the we, whole internet. I, I told Forrest that we need to get rid of these because we have all the information in the world in our pocket. Forrest really likes to look stuff up in books. Wikipedia is just a case the internet fails, we'll still know stuff. <laughs> from what, from 1982? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, those are 76. Forrest was born out here. Um, Forrest, was, Forrest is 10 years younger than I am. Um, so there's three of us brothers that, that grew up out here, um, Forrest being the youngest. Forrest was born in 1990, uh, there. about 15 feet that direction. Um, he was born two weeks early before the midwife got here, so my mom was out here on her own. Uh, with, Can't even imagine. With Rick. <laughs> um, <laughs> it all, all worked out, I guess. Yep, he did not die, if you recall. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he did not die, and she did not die, um, although it was Good thing Crazy that times. nothing too complicated happened. Forrest, so Forrest has kind of followed in Rick's footsteps and um, 
That's a book here? That's his, that's his book. So Forrest has written his book. Rick wrote a book about getting... Rick wrote two books, actually, here uh, about... Uh, about what it's like to be out here and kind of the story of getting here and that whole deal. Um, so we've got two authors in the family, so we have a lot of books. And even though, like I said, I'm a, I'm a total Philistine and, and happy on YouTube, we have, we have books. So maybe Kyle read. <laughs> you be a crazy kind of kid yeah. that reads books. Yeah, I, I can't. Might not play video games. It's going to be a real weirdo. <laughs> So the, the table. table was Michelle's dream. Yeah. The black lacquer. Rick, French Rick, so that yeah, this, this is worth talking about. So Rick, Rick came out here in 1982 from Chicago with... From a Manhattan. Yeah, no, you're right. From Manhattan. Growing up in Chicago from Manhattan with, with a, a couple dreams. And there was, I mean, a dream. And there was a couple of items in the dream that were just like touch points. And one of the things was we're going to have a black lacquer table, right? It was like 1982. She wanted, she wanted pink... And gray cups with black lacquer. That's so 80s, right? Yeah. And we still have the stuff. It's like right. Yeah. So these these cups were brought out here probably a, in a backpack in 1982, and they've been out here ever since. This is the black lacquer table that, that that probably did not sort of come out as imagined. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I don't know if y'all pick this up on the camera, but it's the lacquer is pitted, the seams are cracked, and it's so low on the priority of things to get fixed and changed and it, everything's sentimental like we've been saying like every time you pick up a thing or look at a thing like oh you know we don't you know remember that story um like the posts over here is a good example yeah it's, let's look at the posts the posts are pretty cool i love looking at the posts because yeah, so they are, measure the heights of the boys this is this is brother one this is me brother two brother three is on the other side so that's the three brothers growing up from my first mark is right here in 87. And uh, Kai's down here. Yeah. His first mark when he was two months old. Is um, this is Uncle Ka's first mark in 85. Forrest's first mark is like down here in 1990. And then this is my son is down here first mark in 2015. And I just think that's rad. These posts are like history. Um, They're really fun. So it's cool. It's cool. I was, I was that, I was that tall. When I got here, <laughs> I keep. We've done a bunch of these building projects, and you do the building in the summer because that's when it's happening. And inevitably, you brought in not 90 enough. 90 percent of the lumber that you needed, right? Which is not minor, you know, to go get to figure out. Like the building project is happening. It's not like you're gonna wait until the winter time. So you got to go bring that in your back, and you probably forgot a window or two, which is kind of mind blowing, right? You should be able to calculate that beforehand. But anyway, so we. Brought this window in in the summer. This was in not the summer, so, I, yeah, so, I'm so carried, this was carried in. On carried your in on my back. I've done the trail. I'm exhausted. I'm feeling pretty good. Finally got the window in. I I pull my backpack off, lay right it on by the floor, the porch. and I just hear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so it's a double pane glass window. Amanda did this cool like cover up job. Yeah, but if if you ch check it out, that's duct tape on the back side of it. Duct tape on the back side, right? Because um, and someday. Maybe we'll replace it, but really, probably, but really, probably like, we won't. It's one of those things, like, everything, it works just good enough. Yeah. Like, it, you know, and it'll be the kind of thing that we won't replace, and then Kyle will be like, oh, but my mom did that painting. Well, let's just leave it. You know, stuff like or, that. Or, that that's half of, half the time. It's like, oh, my mom did that painting. I don't want to move it. The other half the time is like, what the f*** is the matter with these guys? This, <laughs> like, really? This window's been broken for 35 years, and these guys couldn't bother to be... <laughs> bring out another window what the hell is the matter with these people which is like I said half the time I walk around here I'm like oh man that black lacquer table that thing is 35 years old there's a lot of stories a lot of good times around that table and the other half of the time I'm just like how come I've got black visqueen sitting on my ceiling <laughs> maybe we should fix that kind of like the couch that's vintage man that couch was brought out here in yeah early 80s and you could and it was by used because Rick did not have a lot of money so he got that thing used and it's been here since the 80s and Christian, we were just talking about this, like, when did you first start putting this together? There's like nails holding that thing up. Nails upon nails upon nails. I remember being 12 years old, the, the arm on the couch was broken. Like, you could lean against it, it would just kind of fall over. And I remember coming in here with a, a hammer and an eight-penny nail, and just banging it in. And that was in 1992. <laughs> so we'll Love that couch. A yeah. lot of good memories. 
We'll replace that couch someday. I don't even want to now that the dog's here. Like the dog sleeps there. It's perfect for him. If you had a new couch, you'd have to kick the dog off. It, it all works out. This is the upstairs of the house. It's a um, an unfortunate design. <laughs> Um, we've got these these three dormer windows that face north and then these big ridge poles that run down So you have to duck under at the bottom and of course we've got bookshelves and crap So you can't actually walk through in the middle where you wouldn't have to duck under so we spent a lot of time Ducking under but this is This is the power Area It's also a total embarrassment. I just want to say for the record. This is like not my not my best work charge controller two inverters this bigger one is for the washing machine, which is their only real load. Um, this is basically for my computer. Lights. I, I, there's not much in terms of load. It's basically my computer, the satellite dish, the washing or the yeah the washing machine every once in a while, and the lights, which are all LED and and don't use much. So um, the batteries are under here. We've got just I think it's it's we've got two 400 amp hours six six volt batteries. So we've got 12 volts at 400 amp hours. Um, there's uh, I want to say 750 watts of solar outside. The interesting thing about the solar is we have way too much all year until about, I would say, like the middle of October to, towards the 1st of November. And then, like October 15th, somewhere between October 15th and November 1st, it's like, now there's nothing at all. So you could quadruple the array and, and nothing times four is still nothing. Right? So it's kind of funny that way. So we run the generator um, every couple days um, from about November through February. But yep. other, other than November through February, we're totally on our own. We've just got a little Honda E2000. Um, just, it just, this is an inverter charger. I run it for about three hours uh, every other day, and that's enough. So we've got the, the blackout shades that we'll take off here pretty soon, actually. But, um, yeah. you know, from, I want to say... Mm, April, April, April through about October. the end of <laughs> yeah. end of August, yeah. beginning of September. It's like you kind of if you want to sleep well because you've got nothing but sun. Well, with For, Rick a writer Rick, and Rick Forrest an writer, author, and... yeah, and Forrest is an author. I, my family is very cerebral. I just I just watch videos. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we don't have TV, and uh, books are great. Uh, we've got a lot of them out here, and because you know. Um, and not all of them are the best, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to when Kai can read a little, when we can read to him, you know, those classic you know, books, that would be fun. Yeah. Reading it, Rick's book to him will be a trip. That'll be really I'm fun. I'm excited about that. Little yeah. Tree will be awesome. Well, yeah. This is my I office. I built that for Christer. Oh, because I... I just couldn't stand the idea of a regular office chair being out here, even though it would be more comfortable. And if you told me you needed it, I would totally let you, but this looks so much better than a swivelly office chair. <laughs> so it's, it's not the Herman Miller Aaron chair. No, it's not. But no. but I really I I like making the stuff and this birch. So we cut down birch for firewood, right? Um, and as long as the wood is green you can bend it and uh, just cut it to fit. I nail it together. It's really fun. Um, that's another one of those things like, oh, I can make furniture. It's, uh, so yeah, I made this chair. I made Kai's high chair, little end tables. I have big dreams of, um, I don't know, making coffee table for the guest cabin and uh, a few other things, like the basket and stuff that's over there. So I'm a software developer. I do a lot of, I write code. So I've got my, my split screens. And I want you to make sure that you capture this. This is where I get all my really good ideas. <clears throat> so I, I do a lot of lot of big thinking up here, and um, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. So feel yeah. feel pretty good about it. This is this is where I spend 40 hours a week or so. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's a really weird feeling. It's the weirdest dichotomy in the world when when I close that. Uh, it's like it's San it's Diego. a it's a moment that happens, right? It's like San Diego stops, boom. Now I'm in the wilderness, right? It's like this bizarre feeling, and it's really cool. Um, and all of a sudden, I wander downstairs, and I'm in this like kind of like primal deal where I've got my pregnant wife and my two year old son in this log cabin in the wilderness, versus you know, like I said, 
Twitter and internet and JavaScript and blah blah blah. Yeah, it is different for me. It's it's interesting that your life is so much different out here than mine. Just just because he's going to work, yeah. um, I feel like there'll be days where I literally don't talk to anyone except for these two. Um, more than days, like it's it's been like a week, you know, because that guy keeps me busy. Like having a phone call where you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And you got your kid and. You've got dinner and you only have two hands. Your cell phones are not made for this. Just the fact that you're talking about phones, though, is like, a di that's a whole new reality yeah. out here. Right? Yeah, um, for sure. That's that's fancy pants for us. And that's actually new in the last two years, too. We didn't have cell phones that worked out here. But we have found we the get, right provider and we got the cell phone booster. And it's like, like I said, it's, yeah. it's this weird, it's not 100 years ago. You can't pretend it's 100 years ago. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> Like I said, I've got about 800 watts of solar, so there's a lot of black back here. I'd love to move it off the porch, but um, I feel really guilty when I start thinking about cutting down the trees. So the, the panels need to be up as high as possible and facing south. So I'm up and I'm south, and I've got a clearing right here. So if I was going to like put them in the yard or something, they'd be way farther down, and I'd have to start cutting down trees. So right, right now they're in the back porch. Yeah, well, it's, it's, back porch has other improvements that yeah, probably should be dealt with first. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. A lot of ins, a lot of outs. <laughs> I'm going to redo the back porch. These will go. But for now, um, this is this is my um, poor man's solar array. Uh, yeah. Which well, is to say our, they're um, leaning up against the side of that one. Dish. It's so ugly. This is but, crazy shit, dude. This is real right here. We got ones and zeros that are streaming out from here into outer space down to San Diego, back out here to the Alaskan wilderness, and, and that's how I'm making money. That's crazy. I, I can't believe that's happening. But that's real, dude. That's that's real. And it's strapped to the side of this log cabin that was built in 1982, when when this place was nowhere. And it's, it's still, still kind of nowhere. nowhere. It's still nowhere. We got the cell antenna back there, which is, like I said, that's a new reality, too. People call the phone rings. It's wild. It's pretty wild. Oh, on this rug. This rug is hilarious. Can we tell the story about this rug? This is a nice rug. Like, for the Ridgeline, it's really fancy. Apparently, Rick had gone to town. So he would go on binge um, money-making spree. So he was a uh, taxi driver or something, whatever. Found a guy's wallet. <laughs> and this is back when credit cards were, like, brand new. So he went and bought this rug and then returned the guy's wallet to him. <laughs> well, he found the guy's wallet, bought the rug on the guy's credit card, and then returned it to the guy's wallet. <laughs> so anyway, it's there, that's our stolen rug. It's hot. <laughs> it's a hot rug. It's a hot rug. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's the only way that, that, that's probably one of the fanciest things out here. The story is, for me is how he did this with no money. Like, I, I'm doing this with money, right? Like, I have a good job. I have a real job where I make real money. And Rick was out here f for real broke, like extra special broke. Um, and, and did all this, and that's just a different way to think about it for me. It's, it's interesting, you know, like, the dichotomy between what I'm doing and what he's doing is really interesting to me, yeah. and I just feel like we're just... We're, just Cheat, we're cheating. Yeah, we're totally cheating. We're, Modern we're, technology and we get a, money. We got a washing machine and batteries. It's like you, you said uh, earlier on the hike in, standing on the shoulders of giants. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so, the fact that you get here and you can come inside and warm up, like, he got back here and it was 40 below and... Yeah, cool. And what? I mean, we've done a <laughs> yeah. lot of work just to insulate the house. Yeah, yeah, we've done a lot. Anyway, that's awesome. Probably, that's probably more than you need for a 600 square foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah.